In this video, we're going to explore, explore nucleophilic aromatic substitution, and we will also exploit it. Uh, this is a less general reaction than electrophilic aromatic substitution, which has a, a much higher utility. This does offer a useful way to put groups on benzene, but it's very limited. It's limited to the fact that there are only two types of aromatic molecules that are candidates for nucleophilic aromatic substitution. First category is a aromatic compound that has a nitro group that is ortho to a halogen. In this case, any of the halogens works. Typically, we don't see fluorine on lists in this class, but this is an exception to that, and we will explain why. Uh, an example would be orthofluoronitrobenzene right here. And the other candidate for nucleophilic aromatic substitution is an aromatic compound that has a nitro group para to a halogen. Para to a halogen. Such as parafluoronitrobenzene. So before we start, I would like to suggest syntheses of this molecule from benzene and this molecule also from benzene. Keeping in mind these groups are ortho to each other so our synthesis might involve an ortho para mixture. But if we start with cheap enough materials we can even take a 50% yield and live with that. If I put the halogen on first that is an ortho para director, and we would make some para nitro fluorobenzene and some ortho. And I think that's the way we have to go because the other strategy would be to make this first, which would be an errant strategy because the next group's going to go meta, which is not what I desire. So here is my synthesis of orthofluoronitrobenzene. Chlorination is achieved with chlorine and iron catalyst. Well, actually, the iron tri uh, iron three chloride catalyst is made when these two are mixed. Or you could have just started with the iron three chloride catalyst. And the next step would be the nitration step, where we have best a 50% yield. Nitration achieved using nitric acid and sulfuric acid, giving probably para major and ortho minor, but we have to make the ortho, so this is probably still the best way to go. All the chemicals here are dirt cheap, so not too worried about that. Similarly, the strategy to get to here would be to have the fluorine on first, Fluorine is also an ortho para director, and we would get the ortho product as well as the para product. Prob probably a little higher yield of para upon the same reaction here. Of course, the, now the new question is how do we get the fluorine onto the benzene? That is not trivial. Let's review. The only way we learned how to put a fluorine on benzene was by way of a diazonium ion. Diazonium ions come from anilines. That didn't work. Diazonium ions come from diazonium ions come from anilines. Anilines come from nitro compounds. We have to be experts at this protocol before test day. And nitro compounds come from benzene. So all the steps in the forward direction are as follows. Nitration of benzene in this forward reaction is uh, con accomplished sorry, using nitric acid and sulfuric acid. Conversion of a nitro compound to an amino can be accomplished by several reducing agents, including 
H2 and nickel. And aniline can be converted to a diazonium ion using sodium nitrite with excess hydrochloric acid and keeping it cold. This diazonium, you don't want it decomposing to a phenol. Warming up to room temperature, that's what RT stands for, in the presence of fluoroboric acid will give us our required fluorobenzene, which can be nitrated to this molecule here. Notice we did two nitrations to get here. Interesting. Nitration here, nitration here. Finally, we can learn nucleophilic aromatic substitution, the title of today's video. Here are four examples, two of the ortho and two for the para. I'll do the mechanism for the first ortho. Uh, the nucleophiles are methoxide, azide, sulfhydryl, and acetylide. I'll be crossing off the spectators and doing my mechanisms. The reason why this nucleophile is drawn towards this carbon is because there's a slightly positive charge on that carbon caused by the halogen's high electronegativity. This draws in, in the rate determining step, our nucleophile towards this carbon. And that causes the pi bond to break. You can't do an SN2. I know you want to. You can't do an SN2 on an sp2 carbon. The bonds are too strong. This resonates towards the highly electronegative atoms in the nitro group and resonates all the way up to the O in this rate determining step giving this key intermediate right here. This key intermediate will quickly resonate back and kick off the leaving group so it can reestablish aromaticity. So coming back, kicking off the leaving group, gives aromaticity and the chloride ion. The reaction is called, in the first step, it's called addition. And in the next step, the elimination makes the pi. So the overall process is called addition, elimination. We see it's called addition elimination. And this next one, we'll do the bottom one this time. The carbon down here is even more positive. I do realize fluorine or fluoride is not an excellent leaving group like chlorine is. But my question for you now is, in a reaction where the rate determining step has nothing to do with the leaving group, do you think how good the leaving group is that important? And semi-rhetorical question, how good the leaving group is not that important? The rate determining step is to get the nucleophile to attack the carbon. Well, this carbon is much more positive, which means it's more rare and to go than this carbon we saw over here. So here we go. Lone pair on acetylide, which changed formula when I did some editing. Lone pair on acetylide attacks the very positive carbon here in what I would have to call one, two, three. Hmm, just counting where these electrons are ending. They hit here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let me count those again. This is a one, six addition. They hit here, and they go past here, past here, past here, past here, ending up here. That's a one, six addition. Call it a one, six addition. And since we're now keeping score, this first one up here was a one, four addition. 
We attacked atom number one. Electrons moved past two, past three, all the way to four. We've seen conjugate addition before, haven't we? Key intermediate in this reaction over here. Here's the key intermediate here. It will undergo an elimination reaction where these electrons flow in here. These resonate to here. And these resonate here. And it doesn't matter how bad the leaving group is, this thing wants to become aromatic so badly it could kick off even a terrible leaving group like fluoride. Actually, it's just a poor leaving group. And it's doing what it should do. It's leaving. And that ends this mechanism. We did an addition. And then we did an elimination. And we have a new nucleophile where our halogen used to be here. Here, here, and here. And this reaction has limited utility, but these reactions all proceed with very high yields and they're fairly easy to do. So I hope you have found this video on nucleophilic aromatic substitution useful and I look forward to our next video.